one way or another, Blondie. This is BBC Radio Devon. We are heading to Huckabee on Dartmoor, yeah, to chat with Tony Parker, the church warden at St Raphael's. Um, it is a chapel that's surrounded uh, by snow drops, and Tony apparently is potting them up uh, to sell in time for Valentine's in containers. Uh, and he reckons it's much better than shop bought rose, I think, certainly at this time of year. Welcome to the show, Tony. Oh, good morning, Toby. And it's uh, a very chilly but very sunny Dartmoor at the moment. Yeah. I should point out, in case any uh, commercial growers are uh, listening to the programme, that we don't sell any of the snowdrops, but we accept suggested donations. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see that, that as a point, and hopefully the donations will be flooding in. You've got some interesting varieties of snowdrops? We've got uh, quite a lot. I mean, some of them are uh, nicknamed ones, but yes, <laughs> of course, we've got the... Yeah, I call one uh, Galanthus gigantus. It's got <laughs> It's because it's big, but it's actually, it's an Elwesi, which is about double the size of the common uh, one, which is called, as you know, uh, Galanthus nivalis. Interesting, a lot of our listeners might be thinking, well, a snowdrop's a snowdrop, but once you get your eye in, like you say, the old Elwesi hybrids, bigger leaves, more grey, um, uh, larger, larger foliage. Yeah, and there's another Elwesi, um, which, again, it's got a nickname, it's called Grumpy, <laughs> and that's simply because on the inside petals there's a sort of upside-down smile, and it looks very much like a grumpy old face, so it's got a nickname. But, yes, there's singles, there's doubles, there's giants, there's grumpies, and there's uh, various variations um, or strains, really, but quite a few are, are Elvises. How, this, what an exciting place to come and visit. How long have the snowdrops been grown there? Was it sort of an accidental thing yeah. spread from one of the, the, the graves, or, I mean, or was it deliberate, the planting no, of well, them? there's... That's a good lead-in question, because uh, we don't have graves. Um, it's because it was the site, or what they call the footprint, of an old Devon longhouse. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the 14th century. Uh, it had a rye straw roof and all that. And we believe that the surrounding land was actually a garden at that time. And then when a, a vicar from Princetown wanted to construct some, what he calls, chapel of ease, I think they're officially called chapels at ease, for the ease of farmers and what he called the outlying hamlets to get to church. He had what had become a derelict Devon Longhouse converted into the chapel as now is in 1868. Now, the difference between, if you like, a chapel of ease and a, a church as you know it is that while it's licensed, and some say consecrated, but it is licensed to have a baptism, uh, a marriage, a funeral, you can't actually be buried there because it's only the footprint of the house that's actually been licensed. So in other words, for the last 700 years, nobody has touched the church grounds. And therefore, if there were a couple of snowdrops at the time, they've sort of multiplied to 15,000. <laughs> 15,000. Well, producer Caroline said, ask Tony to do a 60-second tour. Now, you know, I feared it might be a bit one-dimensional, but I think, listening to you speak there, Tony, I think you can turn this around and turn this into something. You up for a 60-second garden tour? Uh, yeah, I can do one of them, yeah. OK, well, well what this is... As it... long as you're timing it, because I've got machine gun lips. OK. Uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, what, what I'll do is I'll start you off. There'll be a musical bed underneath you that lasts for 60 seconds. By the time the cockerel crows at the end of it, you've got to round up. Round up as if, you know, just leave us wanting more if necessary, but just round up nice and neat. Can you do that, Tony? I can, yeah. Okay, three, two, one. Take it away, my friend. As you approach uh, the chapel at St. Raphael's, you notice the car park. The car park on the left-hand side, because, in fact, if it hadn't been for the start of the car park, we wouldn't have known about all the snowdrops, because when they came to excavate the ground, Mm. uh, we found about 200 bulbs, which I took home, and we started to pop them up. And, of course, most of them took because they're very hardy. Now, if you walk in through the gate, just look to your right, and in what looks like a very narrow lawn, just observe why there are patches of snowdrops at sort of regular intervals. And the reason for that is the farmer opposite, Dave Mudge, one of his calves escaped, got through the gate. and it, 15 it seconds. Ran, it, it ran up. And uh, I put three snowdrop bulbs in every hoof print, and hence we've now got cow prints all the way forward. 
and as you walk uh, around the corner... Whoa, you've left a cl- cliffhanger there. Leave it just there. We, we'll have to come and visit. How do we find you, Tony? OK, well, the easiest way is it's um, it, on the main road between Tavistock and Ashburton, or depending on which way you're coming across, Ashburton to Tavistock, it's called the B3357. Almost exactly halfway, there's a big signpost to tell you you can go to Venford Reservoir or Hexworthy, and it's about 200 yards down from that junction. So if you if you were coming from uh, Tavistock, you're obviously passing um, Princetown, the uh, Two Bridges Hotel, and then it, about seven miles, you'll see the signpost that says Vanderd Reservoir. Just turn right there, and the snowdrops will be available from next Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then the following Sunday, the 19th of February, between 2 and 4.30, there will be a cream tea with the wood-burning stove on inside. And uh, although if we have foreign visitors from Cornwall, we better just warn them that we put the cream on first and then we put the strawberry on the top. Well, fair warning, fair warning. And uh, l- l- listeners who are going to go along, just remember, patch them in on what was around that corner. Just put us out of our misery when we, well, <laughs> when we come you know, up and see you, Tony. Do you, know, do you know what one of the things is, I'll, I'll mention just one thing, because it's what visitors want. It's a compost toilet. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, <laughs> the old school toilet is on your left-hand side, but it's not, an old earth closet. But it is completely surrounded by snowdrops. Well, knowledge of that toilet, I'm sure me and the rest of the listeners will sleep easy in our beds now. OK. Thanks, Joey. okay. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much. Lovely to speak to you. OK, cheers. Bye-bye now. Bye. Goodbye. Let's go to Hattie with the news.